G'day everyone, welcome to the weekend general update for uh, the 28th of April and we've had a very um, interesting couple of weeks, certainly a lot of volatility coming back into markets, uh, not only in the main stock indices but uh, obviously also in, uh, in gold as well which rebounded very strongly last week. So uh, fascinating week, um, let's have a look at some of the details. The S&P index uh, actually recovered 27 points on the week and got back close to the former highs that it was at. We'll have a look at that in a minute. Um, but there's a couple of things that still lead me to believe that the correction uh, which appears to be unfolding in the US is, is not done with yet. Um, there's some volatility in the US index uh, which is generally a sign of a topping process. But we're also seeing some divergence with um, the small cap sector, the Russell 2000. And that's often a, uh, a good indicator that the market's going to go into a bit more of an extended corrective phase. The reason for that is because the larger stocks, which tend to influence the Dow Jones index and the S&P index, are the ones that roll over last. Stocks that tend to, to go into decline first are the smaller end of the market. So it's quite normal to see the smaller stock indices turning over first and then to be followed by, uh, by the larger ones. It's not guaranteed but it's certainly a, um, it's a strong enough indicator to still warrant caution on stocks in general. Now the ASX 200 here uh, had a really good week even though it was only a four day week, uh, ended up higher by 167 points on the week and um, the resources sector that had been absolutely shellacked the week before uh, had a really quite strong rebound as well. Um, almost got back to where it had been the, the previous week. Banks of course were a little bit stronger as well. Now the other uh, main turnaround was that gold rose uh, $61 on the week and that followed a pretty strong rebound on Friday as well. So the six days saw a, a very strong move back in gold which really indicates that um, that massive move down in gold once it broke the 1550 support level uh, really was incredibly overdone. Now the other key thing that I want to bring out here is that the retracement in gold back to beyond the 50% level is a sign that is a sign of relative strength put it that way and that the bottom has probably formed in gold. Now that's not to say we can't see a retest, um, in fact I think some sort of further downside in gold is quite likely, but I, I don't know that we're going to get substantially further lows than what we had before because there's um, just too much strength in that gold market rebound. Copper, pretty volatile, uh, managed a slight rise on the week. Uh, but only back to 317. So that's a bit of a worrying sign with respect to the, the global health. Uh, oil was steady at, uh, at 93. So let's have a look at a few charts. We'll start with the S&P first of all. And we looked at this last week with this big wedge pattern forming here. And if we go back to 2000, You'll notice that the peak in 2000 was exceeded by a small amount in 2007 and then we've exceeded the 2007 peak also by a small amount at this stage. Now I'm not saying that we're now going to get a phase like we had in 2000 or 2008, uh, far from it. I'm still uh, firmly of the view that the conditions are such that uh, this should be a pretty good year and that any correction we've got is, is a mild one. However, this is a rising wedge pattern and they quite often can lead to uh, a breakdown. But at the moment, I guess we could say that uh, it's near the top of that triangle or the top of that wedge and that a move to the bottom of the wedge um, would, would be in order. And that bring, would bring you down to somewhere around about the 1500 to 1510 mark. Now you'll notice that there's some divergence here with the RSI. The RSI forming lower highs, one, two, three, four of them, uh, and there's certainly a, a trending down in the lows as well. So whilst the value of the S&P index has risen, the relative strength indicator is actually declining. So that's indicating that the upward 
movement in the in the index price is running out of steam that's really what it tells us now that doesn't mean that the market has to roll over in a significant way it just means that um, the upward momentum is waning and it will probably get something a bit more uh, a bit more corrective now you'll notice too that we had a bit more volatility in this little pullback here it was only four or five days but a bit more volatility than what we'd seen for a little while so that's one factor let's have a look at the Russell 2000 index and this is where some more obvious divergence is occurring now similarly in the Russell 2000 you notice that between January and the peak which was in mid-March the value of the small caps kept rising but you can see the divergence here on the RSI forming lower highs and lower lows so there was an indication there that the small cap sector was losing momentum and now we're getting um, as opposed to the S&P in the small caps we're now getting lower highs and lower lows on the actual index so the index is now rolled over and is basically confirming what we saw with the RSI so the RSI was a good lead indicator that divergence on this index and I believe will prove to be a good leading indicator on the S&P so that's why I'm still cautious on stocks at the minute I'm not expecting the pullback to, be, to have any great substance but I, I still believe that the correction in global stocks is not done with yet there's still some more to come and that means that uh, there's probably some better buying opportunities out there over the next uh, perhaps six to eight weeks now let's take a look at gold this is gold on a weekly chart you can see it uh, smashed through that uh, long-term support line which had been support for around two years at 1550 also went straight through the next support level at around 1450 didn't quite get down to this 50% level at 1302 um, but has rebounded quite strongly you'll notice that the RSI was heavily oversold uh, more oversold since we've got to go back to um, we've got to go all the way back to 1997 so about 17 years ago to see the RSI down at that level so that's just how oversold gold was so rebound to be expected let's go on to the daily chart now looking at the retracement of this run here which was the run down from the 21st of March down to the bottom on the 16th of April now if gold was still in a strong downtrend this would have struggled to get to the 38.2 percent level and then would have rolled over but instead it went straight up to the 50% level and went beyond the 50% level and in fact touched 1485 so between the, the 50 and the 61.8 now that's an indication of relative strength in the price of gold and therefore um, I think the odds are that if we do get some more downside in gold in other words we get a partial retracement of this recent little rally that I think it'll form a, a higher low so we might pull back sub $1,400 again um, if that's the case don't panic because that would be pretty normal uh, in fact it would be abnormal if gold just went straight back up again it's been belted so hard and there'll be so many people that bought into gold while it spent two years above 1550 that there is bound to be selling so it would be highly unusual for gold to go straight back up again I really expect we'll see gold dip again hopefully form a higher low maybe somewhere around about the 1380 to 1400 area and then rally back up from there but the sign that I'm looking for and this is really the the key one is if we have a look at the spread and I did this last weekend explained this uh, chart this is uh, the value of the GDX the gold miners index in America divided by the price of gold just to quickly recap when the line is falling that means that gold stocks are doing worse than gold when the line is rising obviously stocks are outperforming the index and when the line is going sideways it means they're both performing about the same it doesn't mean they're going 
up or down it just means they're performing about the same during this period here of two years both gold and the gold mining index were rising but they were rising at the same rate so the, the line went flat but it was 2011 this started to roll over in other words stocks started to underperform the price of gold both were still rising but stocks were rising at a slower rate than gold now that is obviously really accelerated since about the middle of last year now what I'm looking for is a turnaround like we saw here so back here in 2008 towards the end October November December that's what I'm looking for now at the moment there is no sign of that having occurred and that's why I'm also still cautious on the whole sector at this stage now as we saw in 2008 gold stocks took off about three weeks before the price of gold started rising so it's not a matter of waiting until the price of gold starts to go up you'll find the stocks will start to go first but at the moment there's no sign of that happening so um, a lot of caution still around that uh, that market and just to uh, finish off on the precious metals area this was uh, silver on the week we had a very strong rebound on Thursday gave back a bit of it on uh, Friday night but hopefully we've seen silver uh, bottom out and start to uh, start to come back up again as well there's the uh, the spot copper chart you can see it was only the middle of February it was uh, up around 375 a pound now we're down at 317 so copper often a leading indicator of the, the global health um, I'm I'm not so sure that it that relationship necessarily applies as strongly as it as it used to because there's just so much distortion in final financial markets these days caused by all the money printing and caused by all of the shenanigans of um, of the hedge funds that I wouldn't be surprised if if this uh, copper price fall was has been engineered in the same way that the um, the fall in the gold price was certainly engineered to a certain degree yes it was um, it was perpetuated by margin calls and and stop-loss triggers but there, there were a few things that went on that suggested that certainly the market was given a very very healthy push to uh, to start the ball rolling uh, the prime example of course is that there was a single order to sell 400 tons of gold in the futures market now no one in their right mind would ever do that if they wanted to uh, short sell in the futures market that that amount they would do it over months so it was uh, to get the best price they could there's no way known that anyone would ever just dump 400 ton order in one morning on the futures market um, that was a deliberate attempt to start the decline and um, and had the desired effect now um, just looking at it from a strategy point of view um, gold looking a little bit better certainly rebounded and showed uh, certainly showed some strength as I explained before but stocks still not outperforming so uh, just be very cautious on on the gold sector and I guess the second part is I don't believe the general correction in stocks globally has uh, finished yet I think there's some more downside this is the time of the year for it um, April, you know April May June July is uh, typically a weaker time of the year but I think this year will be far better than what we saw in 2010 11 and 12 where we had some very significant and sharp sell-offs um, I think this year will be different circumstances are very different so uh, correction yes um, but a rerun of what we've seen over the last three years no I don't don't think that's the case but nevertheless during a corrective phase I think um, the best advice I can give you is um, is really focus on the high quality stocks and, and buy the sell-offs in high quality stocks and uh, and just play it safe for the next few months now just jumping back to just have a look at the Aussie index so this is the ASX 200 for, for those that uh, that follow that uh, we formed a uh, 
formed a high at 5150 pull back a little bit below this um, this support level that we had just under 5,000 uh, rallied but you can see the rally ran out of steam on uh, on Friday I would expect our market to probably be a little bit lower on uh, on Monday certainly resources were a little bit weaker so the rebound we saw in BHP and Rio uh, will probably uh, peter out a bit um, so yeah we'll just see how things go on uh, on Monday so that's it for this weekend cheers